to give you a quick kind of first impression of my new camera, the Hasselblad X1D. Okay, uh, I'm releasing this first to Stuck and Customs Passport members. Thank you guys so much for being uh, monthly members and getting all, all the good stuff. Um, I'm working on a more formal review with a ton of photos. Uh, my plan actually is to take this to Europe with me for 60 days and go crazy shooting really get to know the system much better, share my favorite photos, share more of my learnings in a very thorough review. I'm not a guy that like writes quick reviews. I like to take my time, make a lot of mistakes, to try to save you a lot of time. And also, by the way, believe me, I know that this camera is out of the price range of 99% of photographers, okay? So I wouldn't, don't think about this review as like, I'm trying to get you to buy it or anything like that or don't feel bad that you can't afford it, because all cameras are great nowadays. But instead approach it as like, ah, oh, you know, this is interesting, the way Trey is approaching photography with this medium format lens, or this medium format camera. What lens is he, is he using? What trouble is he having? How are the optics different? How has it changed his carry? Um, so these are all just, they're interesting thought experiments, whether or not you have any intention of buying a Hasselblad, okay? So, um, what's going on here? Uh, first of all, you can see how simple my carry is. I think a lot of you guys know I'm a Zen dude. I'm into minimalism. And this is literally all that I carry. And in the daytime, I don't even carry the tripod, okay? Um, first, let's just look at this thing. Let me flip this thing on here. By the way, thank you, Tane, is holding the camera here. This is the Hasselblad X1D. It is a mirrorless, medium format camera. You can see the beautiful machining. You see my daughter painted a heart on my thumb. Um, really nice little system here, love it. Oops, gotta get in a slot there. It's got a really nice menu system back here. Uh, you see I press play, and uh, I can just slide through the images effortlessly. I took some bad images there, that's my son. Double click, it zooms in instantly to see if you're in focus or not. Uh, really nice. Um, cool menu system, it's really simple. Go ahead and self, turn on the self timer. It's uh, just really nice. It has a um, uh, other things like, a, oops, what is this one? What is this one? One of these is like a bubble system or something. Oh yeah, it's like a bubble system. Um, I can zoom in all the way to make sure it's in focus. Um, just a really nice system here. It has a dual card slots, which is pretty slick. Uh, I'm just showing you some of the highlights here. On it right now, I have a 30 millimeter lens, which in full frame equivalency is maybe 23, 24 millimeters. So it's not quite as wide as I want. So what I've taken to do is now, if, if I want a wider subject, I'll just take a, a two by two grid, like one, two, three, four, right? Just imagine it. Big rectangle kind of split into four smaller rectangles with lots of overlap. And then I paste them together in Lightroom um, and it's too easy. Um, it's a 50 megapixel camera, so once I do that, it almost effectively becomes like a 70 or 80 meg megapixel camera. Uh, just incredible. There is a 22 millimeter lens coming out for it, but as of this time, come here, shh, it's okay. It's okay. Electrician is here. Do you know, in New Zealand, they call electricians, they call them sparkies. Isn't that cute? <laughs> uh, this is the other favorite lens I have. This is the 45 millimeter lens, f3.5. This one is f3.5 also. You can see it's quite small. You know, it's only maybe 10, 20% bigger than my uh, Sony. And this is a 90 millimeter lens that I mostly use for people shots. So actually, when I go out, you know, I just take usually just these two, because I'm usually not in a situation where I'm doing landscape and people, right? So it's usually just these two, yeah. Uh, and they easily fit in here. Um, the only other things that I have as part of the kit are I use these range pouches, okay? Whoop. Uh, these are from Peak Design. This is uh, their, their solution to, uh, you know, protecting lenses. Pretty cool, there's a little flap in here so you can actually have like a shelving system inside of there. Really nice. Um, I'm still using my favorite tripod here. This is the uh, Really Right Stuff uh, Travel Edition. It's got three legs here. Watch, this is always Russian Roulette to see if I can find the one that Ruby broke. I twist all three, 
Ah, this one is a good one. Look at that. I love it. It's a perfect little tripod, carbon fiber, nice and light. It's expensive, but it's it's really good. Um, I'll tell you. Now let me tell you what I think about the image quality on this and why why am I using this now rather than the Sony? Uh, well, it has nothing to do with them giving it to me for free at all because I get free stuff from everybody, which I'm very grateful for. Um, but I think the image quality is better. I'm sure a lot of it is because of the medium format sensor. Um, I used a Hasselblad last year for about three months on a trip around the world, and the quality of the images was just better. That's all there is to it. I'm very sensitive to the quality of images, and it's just not a lot better. It's not, it's not like three times better. It, you know, uh, either it's like equal or 10, 20% better, maybe sometimes 30% better. And the optics just have a little bit of a different feel to it, okay? And by the way, I mentioned something about this on Hasselblad or on a Facebook Live that I can address now. I get this um, complaint sometimes of like, oh, you know, now that you're using a Hasselblad, you can't relate to the common man anymore. You know, I think this is uh, ridiculous, right? Because look, I've been using every kind of camera for the last 10 years. I've really experienced with all kinds of, not all kinds of, a lot of kinds of cameras. But the equipment is not really the most important thing. So when you hear people talk about equipment, including me, it doesn't mean that you should give it more importance than it does. Because those of you that have been following me for a long time, you're a passport member, you know this. You know that much more than the camera, I talk about how to compose a photo one of the most important things, how to tell a story with a photo, how to do post-processing with a photo. All of that stuff is much more important than the camera that you're using. And those are the kind of things that I emphasize. So um, I think, you know, as you continue to come, I'm gonna still continue to work on those things. It just might so happen that some of the photos that go into it will come out of a slightly different camera, right? But all those things are just as important still, right? Am I right? Of course I'm right. Uh, the things I don't like about this camera is it's slow. It is slower than Christmas. The specs say it's two frames per second, but I don't think it's even close to that fast. Um, it also makes a really weird sound when you take a photo. Listen, listen to the sound. Ready? That weird? It sounds like something's loose in there. Listen to that again. It's a weird sound, isn't it? It's not like a satisfying Nikon, but bam! but it's okay. Um, and so what this means is that it's not very good at shooting um, in uh, low light situations I found. I mean, if you're on a tripod, you're fine, but I tried to take it to a party the other night, very low light situation, and my photos came out not good. Um, I find that I have to, my shutter speed has to be at least 1 60th of a second in order to get a clean shot. Everything less than that was blurry. Um, and it wasn't because I was drinking and swaying around, it was just blurry. I've noticed this in other, other situations too. Uh, so I have to be at least 1 60th. Uh, and with the Sony, I could, I could do it much slower because of that gimbal on the, on the sensor. Um, so it's not really great for handheld nighttime photography. Uh, but otherwise, it seems pretty good. The other complaint I have about it is it's a little buggy. The software is a little funky. Like sometimes, it has trouble autofocusing, catching on things. Uh, then sometimes, when it, even when it does catch on something, you try to take a photo and it just doesn't take the photo. And you're like, well, what's going on? You gotta reboot it. Um, it boots up a little slow. I'm hoping this is just firmware stuff that will be fixed over time. And those are relatively minor complaints. But um, as far as the, it being slow, two frames per second, that's not really a concern for me. Because when I go set up for a, a landscape or an architecture or city shot or ocean, I take my time. I'm in no rush. You know, I, um, I, it's not a speed thing. I'm not needing to take many frames per second. I'm just taking one. Um, the last thing that I also will say about this camera that I quite like is I would say a lot of my best photos I've taken in the last 10 days. I'm hardly an expert with this thing yet. Uh, but they just come from a single RAW. So when I run that through Aurora HDR, it looks just great. Um, I've tried a few different things, multiple exposures and single exposures, but I'm finding that a single RAW is just pretty darn good. So that's satisfying and that saves me time as well. 
Okay, well that should end this thing. Uh, thank you very much. Let me introduce you to our newest team member here. What is your name, rank, and serial number? Tana Jin, I'm from Aratel. All right, and we're about to go on an adventure together, yes? Yes. All right, where, where are we going? We're starting off in Lisbon, and then we're going to Barcelona, and then we're going up to, uh, uh, to London, then to Paris, then to Berlin, then to, oh, Amsterdam is in there as well. Oh, I've screwed this uh, one. You forgot Milan. Oh, it's Milan. Okay. It's okay, it's your first day. It's first, first day. day. <laughs> what do you think, Tina? <laughs> no, I said, what, what do you think about him messing up on the first day of his job? No, it's okay. That was a very, that was a very, it was a very difficult question. So, all right. All right. Um, all right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you got something out of that. I'll put together a more full review and like a lot of sample photos because I think that's that's one of the best ways to see what a camera does is look at all the all the sample photos. All right. Um, so what we'll, we'll do now, we'll end this by first I'll show you five or six of my favorite photos I took with the old Hasselblad and then I'll show you a collection of maybe, I don't know, ten or so that I've taken with this one and these are ten in the last ten days. Look, I'm not saying these are great works of art, they're not like all right at the top of my portfolio, but you kind of get a sense of what the camera can do. So I'll let that slideshow run right now. Bye guys, thanks. <laughs>